Um, so my name is Nuno. Uh, I work for Opera. Um, so we've been you know, evangelizing mobile internet for many years. Uh, we did our first uh, mobile browser in 99 in a Cyan netbook, if everybody has used one of those. Uh, that became Symbian. Uh, well, what happened to my presentation? So you don't see my name, that's not important. Uh, we have a product called Opera Mini that I'll, I'll describe a bit, but what I'm gonna tell today is not a big theory about things, but it's just display some facts and observations that we have seen, because the large adoption of our product is actually in emerging markets. This is a picture taken in Indonesia, and you see, uh, you don't see very well, but it's, there's a USB cable, and this is their modem. Uh, I think earlier they were discussing what's happening in Africa, but I just want to say that you know the web is mobile, the web is here, and there is a need for it. You don't need to go around the world saying you should use internet on your phone. The observations we've seen is that if the right conditions are there, the appetite to do it is there. Um, uh, did I have a the clicker? You're on. That? Yeah. Okay, so just one thing. So why does a company like ours is spending you know, time on this? We, we only do browsers. We are one of the few companies we do browser technology. We started a long time ago. We started on the PC, moved to mobiles. But uh, one of the reasons why you know, we are investing in emerging markets, et cetera, because we as a company, we want to provide the best internet experience in any device. Um, and for us, it's all about that there's so much information out there, people should be able to consume it, regardless if it's in your TV, in your phone, etc. So, very short about Opera Mini. Opera Mini is a mobile browser um, that is used by more than 30 million people per month. Uh, and the reason why this has been extremely successful in emerging markets is, one, it provides full internet. What you see there, it's what you can get on this phone, which is quite unique. And it's what you can get on this phone on a GPRS network in Jakarta, in the middle of traffic. And that's what's been very unique about Opera Mini. Works on every phone, every network. And that's been one of the philosophies we followed. We actually started just two seconds about Opera by doing the 360 old browser for Nokia. Uh, you know, and we as a company, you know, the financial modeling is thinking, you know, smartphones are going to rule the world, they're going to become, everybody's going to have a smartphone super thing. Uh, and it's still a very small percentage. And when you see markets like China and India, et cetera, with so many subscribers, you know, Nokia is still quite dominant in those markets. So what we said, okay, if we cannot force hardware to go up, how do we force the browser to go down in terms of hardware requirements? And it works in every phone. So that was the base proposition. How can we make full internet on a you know, $20 phone, or a phone that you give for free. So we started in 2007, and I'm gonna show this because I think it shows the awareness in the market and how adoption has been going on. So this is the billions of pages we transcode. It's a client-server solution. So we're doing close to 13 billion, well, we just passed 12 billion, this is from July, so it's, it's growing very rapidly. So you see that there's been a constant growth in terms of people browsing. And this is real usage. This is per month, not cumulative, by the way. Uh, and right now, we have 30 million people every month using this, a lot of them in emerging markets. So I just wanted to show this also to try to give like a more business perspective. What's the opportunity in these countries? So we've had a lot of uh, you know, Western Europe, North America, uh, you know, the broadband penetration, all that cycle that went in the telecom development. But now, when you look at Russia and Indonesia, which are two of the biggest markets where we are present, you see that, you know, the broadband penetration is still extremely low. Uh, but in Russia, I think they now surpass the 100% penetration. People have multiple SIM cards, etc. And Indonesia is also growing very rapidly. So although not everybody can have broadband or has a PC that they personally own, etc., most people have a, have a mobile phone. Most people in a demographic that you would want to reach has a mobile phone. A lot of times they actually have more than one and more than one SIM card. So how big is the mobile browser in Russia? So I give this example. This is the market share of all browsing, not just mobile. You know, Opera for desktop, Internet Explorer, Firefox, everybody. Our mobile browser has now close to 12% of market share. 
means that one tenth of every page view or in Russia, internet, is done on your mobile. Plus, you know, there's the web browsers, etc. This is the ones we can track. So it's also not a niche market anymore. In these countries, this is a real way people are accessing the internet. And this is published by uh, liveinternet.ru, which gives the market stats in general uh, in the market. And then the, another interesting part we saw is that, okay, so we have all these users, there's all this data, so what is people in these countries doing? Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I work in the mobile industry and you, know, you see the LBS use cases, you know, all these cases that are very mobile specific. And then we're gonna see what do people wanna do? And what we concluded is that people just wanna, you know, flirt online on Facebook and talk to their friends. Uh, so actually the social networks is actually what's driving most of the adoption in these markets. And then it follows things that are mobile specific, such as downloads, being music applications, etc. And then you still have Google and your email, etc. But the growth of social networks has really impacted the, the adoption of mobile internet in all these countries. Um, because, you know, I'll have a bit more data on that, but you know, there's a lot of barriers sometimes for usage of these services. Uh, you know, but people in emerging markets are very social by nature. Um, another interesting part is to see the phones. The Nokia 6300 is the one I showed before. It's a phone, I guess here in Holland, you'll get it for free almost from an operator. So they might have, you know, five, six million using that. I just want to make a parallelism to when you talk about iPhone and these smartphones and the number of phones they have sold. I don't know, 15, 20 million, I don't know how much Apple has sold now. But then, you know, and the top 10 phones of Opera Mini make a big bulk of our user base. So you have millions and millions of people using Series 40, Nokia phones or Sony Ericsson phones going online in full internet. So it's a, it's a very different paradigm, paradigm shift in these countries where you jumped from you know, accessing internet cafes and universities to your everyday phone that costs you very little to be able to access the internet. So we ask a couple of questions of people in Russia. It's a lot of text, so I'll just talk through it. You guys see the presentation. So you know, where, where do you access this and why do you access this? So, it's not surprising results, but it's kind of confirmation of what people think, you know, uh, like commuting in a lot of these countries, you know, if you've been to Moscow, if you've been to Jakarta, it's not an easy place to go around, it takes a lot of time to go from one place to the other. So people during commute times, it, it's something they, they do very much. Uh, you know, and then you have more of the practical stuff, like, you know, this guy likes fishing, likes to see the weather and the news, etc. We also see a lot of people then just using also for school work, Wikipedia, and search. That's when you ask somebody, they say that. Uh, but then, this is also very interesting that it's, social, it's changing socially because a lot of people access are online at school or universities and at work, and now also in the evenings. That's why social network then becomes so important because you can actually go online, go out, and, and get information from other people. So from Indonesia, sorry. Uh, we, I have more of like an outline, and uh, this has been um, compiled by, you know, we have a person that does like marketing there, and she's, uh, I guess, 23, typical Indonesian girl, so she's been our best hire in my team, because she's, she's the reflex of why people are using internet in these countries. So social network has been very important, you know, people need to be online 24 hours with their friends. Uh, a lot of students, etc., do web, web search, the low PC net penetration saves them a lot of time, uh, you know, not, not having to go to internet cafes, etc. And after some hours of the day, also, you know, for you to go to internet cafe is not so easy. Um, it's a commuter's dream, you know, massive traffic in Jakarta, especially in the other big cities, people are online. It's less restrictive and it's personal. Uh, if you are at work or at school, etc., system administrators will block certain types of sites. You're not really sure you know, uh, if you're being monitored or not. Um, you know, and for example, Indonesia is a Muslim country, so also certain behaviors are not very, pub you know, are kept more private in terms of things people are accessing. So we've seen that uh, the mobile network usage on the mobile phone is really ta tailored for that. Uh, in other parts of the world, we've actually seen focus of uh, growth of mobile internet. For example, for uh, gay dating sites. 
that became very fast in some countries because you know, it's a personal experience people have. So we've seen uh, good adoption based on, on that. The last part, which is very, very interesting, is that you know, Vodafone is here, is actually part of ours. I have to give him the props also. Uh, but in Indonesia, mobile internet is something an operator puts forward to acquire customers. It's not just because it's cheap, etc. I'll show you. Another thing I want to show is that in emerging markets, you know, uh, I come from the corporate front, of course. There's a lot of NGOs and health. There's a lot of issues that are extremely serious and much more, I would say, important than what we do. But from a marketing perspective, if you want to sell mobile internet, you have to do things like this. This is Indosat, which is one of the biggest uh, operators in Indonesia. And this is how they market mobile internet. If you check how much uh, Indonesian baht, uh, rupee, <laughs> rupee yeah. uh, is worth, it's, it's extremely cheap also. So they use this a lot to retain customers. So I think this is also a point we would like to make. You know, we are a Norwegian company at heart, uh, and we have a lot of business in emerging markets. If you have mobile applications, we want to say there's a huge market there, but go there and market it as if you'd market you know, to cool people. Don't be complacent because people, you know, if you meet somebody, your age group there, they'll have a lot of the same thoughts and ideas and the way they behave. So I think for us, that's what's been successful for us. We have gone in and promote this for what it is. It's mobile internet, it can help you. So that's been very interesting. So just to, I just wanted to reemphasize this again because this comes from a, one of the Russian bloggers that says, you know, the growth social network is driven by changes in the economy and politics. In Russia, we have a lot of topics to discuss. <laughs> um, so, over and over again comes back this that people want to interact and either by distance, by lack of access um, to communication, etc., it really drives. So if I would have to kind of summarize what are the conditions that make mobile internet or mobile applications pick up in emerging markets, because we've seen, uh, I have a last slide that shows then Latin America, which is lagging a lot behind, at least for our product, you know, how people adopt. You need to have the right pricing. You know, the pricing per megabyte needs to be low. It's, uh, sometimes it's not, they actually surf a lot and they spend quite a bit of their money on this, but it needs to be perceived low and it needs to be transparent for people. Uh, the other part, and this is a, a bit strange, but the markets where we've seen the most pickup, and I've talked with a lot of other application developers and it seems to be recurring, when you have open handset markets, meaning people buy their own handsets, they change the SIM cards, do whatever they want, the adoption of services occurs much faster because people are used to download applications. The Vodafone is <laughs> looking at me now. But another thing is that it's very common, for example, in Indonesia, you have your phone and you have your phone with the best deal in the market. So you keep your number, you receive calls, don't pay, and then you have the best deal in the market to call or surf, etc. So you keep kind of two phones around, depending on what you want to do. So people get very creative how they can utilize things. And of course, if there's low PC and broadband penetration, uh, this enables, of course, the fast moving to mobile. Like marketing, uh, uh, Opera Mini, you know, in Western Europe and North America, we have a fair amount of users, but the use case, it, it's not so needed, you know. Most of you are carrying a laptop at the moment, you know, so you are connected a lot more often. And you have, if you have a computer at home, of course, you're not going to be in your mobile phone a lot of time. Well, some of us, yes, but normal people will not. So who's next? So we've seen that the uh, Russian CIS, I didn't go so much into Ukraine, et cetera, but it's very, very similar. 
Russia and CIS is speaking up, Indonesia is speaking up, and we see India. So let me just show you what's this data, because it gives you a perspective of, in the 30 million users we have, what's the different usage patterns that reflects a bit how the market is going. So the first column, oh, the countries, and then you have pages per user. So how many pages do people go in a month? The second part is that you know, we compress the data as you browse. So how many megabytes of surfing data do you use? The last part here is that if you don't use Opera, you use like, you know, a browser that does not have a compression, this would be the real data. So if you're using like iPhone, for example, there's no compression, this would be the difference. Just to say that, for example, you know, without compressing data, you know, people were browsing for 20 to 40 megabytes a month. This is only going to websites. Does not include any file downloads, any music downloads, anything. It's just going to a website. Okay? And you can see that where we look at the slide before, when I mentioned you know, the right pricing, etc., you know, Russia, Indonesia, India, South Africa, Nigeria, they have quite affordable data rates for the market they have. That automatically makes that one, they are very high in the total number of users, but they are also very high in usage. Um, but then, Latin America has a very, very different situation. I don't know if you know guys on the market, but data pricing there is extremely expensive. Uh, it's more expensive than in Norway. And Norway is like the most expensive country in the world. Um, so, and that reflects very much then, you know, people are surfing more or less less than what they surf in Russia, and ma very many less page views. Uh, and I think this is even skewed because we have less users in these countries, meaning it's really the early adopters that are counting on those stats. So even early adopters are surfing less, much less, than a lot of mass market in Russia and Indonesia, where we have in the millions of users. Uh, and for reference, I actually put here that Netherlands, UK, and Germany, so you actually see the usage patterns of what people do. So we think that uh, this market is quite interesting. It's continued to grow a lot. Uh, we actually look forward for the evolution that I think Latin America will adjust to what has happened, because we saw in Russia started two years ago, in Asia Pacific, or Southeast Asia started last year. We really believe Latin America will be the next one to follow because if they want to invest in this area. Uh, and we've seen extremely you know, focus on uh, now Africa coming up. I think there was mentioned before, there's like Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa that have very good coverage. That's exactly the same countries where we see that people are adopting mobile internet. Done. Better. Thank you, Nuno. Thank you. Loads of questions. You have to pick two, Claire. I have to pick two. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Um, okay, one question. Martin de Brauer. But why is mobile internet in, in, in Indonesia so cheap? Is it sponsored? Is it built? Subsidized? Why? Uh, well, I, I don't know the historical facts, but I think that uh, a lot of the... Um, I know that for Russia, it started as regulation when they built the spectrum. This, the price was set. Uh, I also think because in the beginning, uh, I don't think people were really thinking that would be used for browsing. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, it's aligned also with how the other, you know, calling is also very cheap. And uh, we've also seen that Indosat, I think from my information, and some things might go many years back, Indosat was quite aggressive in the market. So they went in and really set the price low. You have the same thing in uh, Ukraine, where Life, which is uh, a Turkcell subsidiary, they went to the market and the price of GPRS is extremely low. So what these companies, I think it's what MVN knows, have made in the Western world for calling. They come in really cheap calling. Uh, and indeed, some of these emerging markets, they've done it with data because they know people want to use mobile internet. So that, that's, you know. Okay, and how will you make money with Opera Mini then? Oh, <laughs> the big question. So. Well, we have different types of business as a company. You know, we do a lot of partnerships. With the, we have deals with most tier one operators in the world. We do licensing deals, etc. I think for emerging markets, focusing on that, uh, I think at the moment, quite honestly, we need to work more with operators to be able to, to make a sustainable business model there. Mobile advertising, etc., will come in some markets. In emerging markets, I think the operators need to be very much open 
to work with the content developers if they want people to continue to invest. So we actually announced a deal today uh, with Megaphone in Russia uh, where they're offering uh, unlimited, surf as much as you want with Opera Mini for a certain amount uh, per day. Uh, and I think we will see a lot more of those deals. So we made the investment, we have the users now. So, so I make a parallelism. We have more users in Russia than any operator has on their portal. Amazing. So we are becoming a distribution channel in these countries. And when will it be available for the iPhone? Uh, I cannot comment on that. Today. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Okay. So okay, many and, and many other questions. Please, uh, in the break, uh, yeah. go to um, go to Nuno and then uh, ask. Thank you. Questions. Thanks, Nuno. Please, we said it. Um,